I've known Stuart since I was 15, he was 13. We went our separate ways, both joined the Royal Air Force and met up again in 98. During my career, um, it's pretty much been year in, year out, deploying to a different theatre. My last time in Afghanistan um, was the, the, my fourth deployment there. We got married in uh, 2011. Uh, we'd already had our son by then, George, who was in full number one dress for the wedding. It was getting a little bit, um, a little bit tedious about um, going again and again, but um, it, we had a job to do at the end of the day. Being a serving member of the Royal Air Force, I knew what the procedure would be if Stuart was ever injured on deployment. I knew that I would get a knock on the door, and unfortunately in February 2013, I was unlucky enough to receive one of them knocks. The day of the incident, the ops room got onto the radio to us, said can we uh, head out to one of the local villages and have a chat with uh, the headman to uh, gauge the, the atmospherics and the, the feeling towards the British forces itself. And it was en route to the, uh, to the village um, that unfortunately we drove over and initiated uh, an IED. I remember the day that I got the knock at the door, um, George hadn't been well, he'd been quite poorly with um, chicken pox. And I can remember seeing people outside the front in uniform but not thinking twice until there was a really loud knock on the door and my name shouted throughout the house. Within seconds I knew what had gone on before I'd even got to the door. I can remember just looking at them and just asking if Stuart was still alive. As the vehicle drove over it, it literally went, it initiated um, underneath my seat and uh, ejecting me clear of the vehicle. So I picked up my son and I ran the 400 yards to my friend's house, literally launched my son through the door and then ran back to their house. The extent of my injuries were a fractured jaw in three places. Um, I lost my bottom teeth, uh, split my tongue in half. I fractured my both scapulars, um, my left arm, um, ribs, my sternum, um, 18 fractures of the, the spine, um, my pelvis was fractured, I lost my left leg um, above the knee and the right leg was an elective amputation because it was not healing correctly um, below the knee. I think in total it was about 36 separate injuries on top. Stuart was brought back to the UK 24 hours after the incident. All I wanted from when I was told was to go and see Stuart and give him a cuddle and tell him it was all going to be alright. My uh, jaw was wide shut. So when the people that I were cared that, that I cared about came to see me and they asking how I was and things like that, I had no way of communicating to them. He says that he can't communicate, but because we've known each other so long, he doesn't need words to communicate with me. I could see it in his eyes. Imagine you're in a bad way and you really want to explain to them that I'm fine, don't worry about me, as long as you're okay. I've got no way of communicating that across themselves. So that was probably the, uh, the worst moment in time for myself. It was strange to see the guy that had only left you a month ago, who is really into his fitness, laying there in a bed hooked up to loads of machines. We eventually moved down to Headley Court, and that's where Stuart's real hard work started. He stood up on prosthetic limbs two and a half months to the day that he'd been blown up. I had heard of the Royal Air Force Benevolent Fund, I had done some fundraising, but it was always just, well, it's never going to affect me, it's never going to affect my family, I'm not going to need them. And then when Stuart was at Headley Court, he found a wheelchair that would enable him to go off-road, which would also enable him to play with our son more. And the RF Benevolent Fund paid for that, and that really affected Stuart and George, because it was the first time that they could actually go out, have fun, have races and have a normal father-son relationship. The support that they give, um, it's, uh, it's so invaluable and uh, the, the help that they do give you um, it helps you out and gets you back to being a normal family and a normal life as possible and as quickly as possible. So obviously without their help, I probably wouldn't be where, where I am or, or the person that I am today. Yeah. The Royal Air Force Benevolent Fund has really improved our family's life from the home that we live in, putting money in to help us get the house right for Stuart's needs. They've purchased a, um, a hand bike for Stuart, which has enabled him to get his physical fitness back up, which has therefore enabled him to be a better dad because he's got more stamina to stay awake, he stays fit, and because he now stays fit, he's back to the guy three, four years ago 
that, you know, that I, the guy that I fell in love with. From day one, from, uh, from the point of injury until um, to where we are today, the fact that the RF Benevolent Fund have managed to help me with um, grants towards the wheelchair to help me um, carry out certain obstacle courses and for a bike, which helped me uh, get my fitness back on track, get me back to where I am, and towards um, the payment for the part of the house to get adapted for, again, for my general day to day living, really. Um, and aside from all that, they've, we've always got the um, in the background the help that they've and support they've given my you know, my wife and my children, um, and I'll always be eternally grateful for that. Um, and the fact that um, they'll always be there is a massive help for ourselves. Um, literally, they're, they're, ne they're never going to go away. The benevolent fund are there to support me. Literally, even though um, my injury is in the past, and my life still continues, and the fact that they're still going to be there is a massive help for myself and the family.